Hey Trey, good evening. This is Ryan with TrendLizard.com. Thanks for becoming a member at TrendLizard. Thanks for sending me an email. I think you're going to like what we do. As you know, we take a look at anything basically that trades on a price chart uh, and apply the Elliott Wave Theory to it to understand where it's been and where it's going. And you sent me an email asking me to take a look at three tickers for you. I'm going to do that for you tonight. Uh, we're going to take a look at Microsoft, MSFT, NVIDIA, NVDA, which we've taken a look at very recently, and then also Palantir, PL. TR in that order. So we, we'll start with Microsoft. All three of these are stocks that we've looked at before, um, but let's just start from the, the beginning on each one of them. So Microsoft, uh, pretty clear delineation between long-term major patterns here. Incepted back in 1986, gave us a really nice five-wave advance up into the 2000 or 1999 high. Uh, underwent a very large ABC pullback, just like the overall market did in the S&P 500. And since then, since 2008, I believe, uh, maybe late or early 2009, uh, a low was recorded to this decade-long ABC pullback, and a new trendy five-wave advance has begun to the upside since then. So uh, our concern is what has happened uh, over this time frame, what has happened off of that low in 2009. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this price action here. Uh, this takes a closer look at it, and to me it looks fairly clear. we got a pretty, fairly quick first wave uh, a two-year, maybe second-wave pullback, and since then, since 2011, we've been in a massive third-wave advance. Really nothing uh, hap has happened to the downside to suggest that we're any closer to an end to this five-wave advance. That's why we believe this entire thing is, a f is a wave three. And it appears as if we're getting closer to the end of wave three, but we're not there yet. You can kind of see the five-wave move shown in blue. Uh, that would be the... Um, once that's complete, that would be the completion of wave three. So our concern is when this fifth wave completes, the move that started off of the 2020 low, uh, we it looks like we'll be in a position to complete this third wave advance and undergo one of those larger corrections from there. So that's what's at stake. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the 2020 action to see what's happened off that low. And I've looked at this before. Uh, there's a few different ways to take a look at it. Uh, and it's just not clear, and this has happened on a number of different stocks where we're getting counter trend movement, but it kind of runs in the direction of the overall uptrend. So we're getting kind of running corrective movement, which makes it a little bit tougher to label, but I still think we can kind of distill it down to something that's going to be useful for you. So off of March's low, we had a very nice five wave advance. I've labeled it down to three waves or uh, three degrees of trend. You have the red degree, one, two, three, four, five, and then each internal leg also fits. Uh, with trendy up moves. Once that completed, some type of larger correction has begun. Now, my inclination would be to call it a triangle. Can't be a triangle because triangles don't happen in the second wave position. Triangles on only happen as B waves or as fourth waves. Obviously, this is a second wave no matter how you slice it. So even though this to me looks like the better fit or the best fit, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's try to come up with different ways to label this second wave correction. Uh, another way we can do it is just say the second wave completed fairly quickly, and since then it's been a series of first and second waves to the upside. Uh, not the most likely labeling, but still possible. Uh, let's try again. Uh, the other concept, and these are all things we've looked at before when we've analyzed Microsoft, is that we've been in one large running second wave correction over several months. Uh, that has completed more recently in May to give way to more directional price movement as we are seeing now. No matter how you slice it, it all boils down to the same thing. Microsoft needs to stay above 257 to remain bullish uh, heading forward and to uh, imply that the advance off the 2020 low is not yet complete. Uh, generally speaking, it's very clearly not complete. It looks like it's in the third wave of whatever's happening here. Higher prices are very much indicated. I think you have to remain bullish on this guy as long as it's trading above 257. So let's zoom in one more time and just look at this advance here off of May's low. Uh, that move is a very clean, trendy five-wave move, as you can see here. It appears as if it's getting closer to a high to this five-wave move. Over the last couple of weeks, it's been in a fourth-wave correction. Uh, should get some more strength in a fifth wave. At that point, we would expect a larger pullback, a correction of this move. But again, overall... The advance off the 2020 low, no matter how you label it, appears to be an incomplete move. It should become a five-wave move before it completes. When it does give us a five-wave move, then we're going to have to be concerned with a much more important high, like I said, the start of a larger fourth-wave correction that could lead to uh, several months, even a couple years worth of corrective downside movement. But in the meantime, until this advance here, this one off of the 2020 low, becomes a five-wave move, you have to remain bullish. 
uh, with a stop level at two, uh, 257. So there is Microsoft. Next up is NVIDIA, NVDA. Uh, like I said, we looked at this very recently, I think just last week. I'll do it again for you just to give you an update. Uh, might move a little bit quicker here just because it is so fresh. Uh, but incepted back in 99, had a very large ABC pullback since then off of the 2008 low. It's been in an apparent five wave advance. You can see it very clearly, first wave, second wave, big third wave up, nice fourth wave pullback. And then it's been in a fifth wave advance since then, I think since late 2018, early 2019 to the upside. So very clear. And we know what happens when five wave moves complete. We get a much larger correction, something that's going to correct this entire advance. That could be substantial. When this five wave move completes, it'll be time to exit. We're not there yet. We're getting closer, but so far, higher prices are indicated. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. So we're just taking a look at this advance, uh, this fifth wave advance right here. Uh, this takes a look at it. Again, it's a very clear move. You have a very nice five wave move for wave one, second wave pullback, five wave advance for wave three, a flat kind of expanding fourth wave correction. Since then, since the 2021 low, we appear to be in the fifth wave of that advance, and it's starting to take a five-wave shape of its own. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this action off of the 2021 low. Uh, here it is. It looks like a five-wave move in progress. Uh, first wave, second wave, third wave. The biggest question we really have is whether this fourth wave has completed or not. Uh, NVIDIA has managed to move back towards its high. If it continues, obviously that means wave four completed at July's low. If we see a reversal near here, it's going to mean a larger fourth wave is playing out. And let's go ahead and flesh that out a little bit more. So uh, if that fourth wave completed, uh, it completed obviously July 19th. And since then we've had this constructive, I mean, you could label it either way, but it's it's pretty constructive move to the upside. As long as NVIDIA stays above 190, we would expect it to continue directly higher in the fifth wave of that advance. If at any point it reverses and moves below 190, again, we'd have to think that a larger fourth wave correction is playing out. So that's basically the only thing that is, that is at stake here. NVIDIA has to be expected to continue higher. We would expect a nice fifth wave up. Uh, but again, at that point, you have to start getting more cautious because you're going to start seeing these five wave moves that have taken a lot longer time starting to complete. And at that point, you have to worry about a much more substantial pullback Remain bullish until there's a crack in the dam, but you can see that uh, uh, we're starting to complete some very large five-wave advances, so that needs to be on your radar as things progress here. So there is that one. Let us go ahead and move on to Palantir, PLTR. Now, I have a prediction for you right off the bat. Uh, no matter what I say here, I'm going to get some hate mail in my comment section because this guy has a very fervent following of, of folks. Obviously, it uh, featured on Wall Street Bets and things like that for a bit, so a lot of people were following it had a major spike in early 2021 and has given that all back. And at that time, I think it was early March, I came out uh, last time I looked at this and said, you know, I just, I have a really tough time getting behind it because we just want to trade in the directions of, of the direction of trendy movement. And that's not what we were getting on Palantir. That proved correct. I think it was trading at about 25 at that time. It continued down to about 17 and has kind of traded sideways since then. I digress. Uh, let's start from the beginning here. Palantir was incepted back at the start of October in 2020. Gave us a nice trendy up move, gave us a counter trend pullback, and then another trendy up move. Since then, this guy has reversed, given back almost all of it to the downside, uh, and has recovered off of May's low, but then again, hit a wall to the downside here. So overall, there's really no good way to label this up move as a completed move, and that's okay. Just because it was incepted in October doesn't mean this is the start of of the Elliott wave pattern. So if I were to guess basically where it is, you basically had uh, a third, a fourth, and a fifth wave. Just because it was incepted here doesn't mean it was the, again, the beginning of its ultimate uh, Elliott wave pattern. So whatever the case may be, the pullback in 2021 is big enough to make this fairly pointless. Obviously, whatever happened completed, whatever happened to the downside has kind of reset the charts. And so our question is, does this action that's happened off of February's high constitute a bullish scenario for this guy and I have a tough time buying it still and I'll show you why if we take a look at that price action off the 2021 high uh, that down move that happened looks a whole lot like a trendy five wave move to the downside now since it recorded that low in May it had a very nice recovery moved from about 17 up to almost 28 uh, but then it hit a wall again and gave a large portion of that back and then over the last couple weeks it's traded sideways so just looking at this uh, straight away without trying to make any concessions concessions or having any biases on what might happen or not giving a hoot about what they do as a company. 
I don't really care. I'm just here to look at the chart and try to find trendy five wave moves. The fact that, that we got one to the downside in 2021 concerns me. Um, we did get one to the upside, but as we as we go, I'll show you why we need to be cautious about that uh, as well. But if I was to give you my gut feeling, what is playing out here? You have a down leg here, maybe a wave A, and then still in a larger ABC wave, which is going to be a B wave on a larger time frame. That is my uh, thought. Now, if we try to get creative, we try to make find a way to say, no, nope, this is bullish. I want to buy it. We could try something like this where we say, okay, this is actually the fifth wave down, an A, triangle B wave, and then a very short C wave. Since then, we've had a first wave up and we're in a second wave down now, ready to take off to the upside. I don't think this is as obvious. Can't rule it out. Uh, but the concerns that I have with this labeling here is that while this was a nice recovery, trendy five wave move, this pullback off of the late June high into July's low looks trendy itself. And if we look at this recovery action here, this actually looks like counter trend action. So the fact that this uh, first wave has already been retraced by 61.8%, yet it's not bouncing off this level and is instead heading sideways, gives the impression that it's going to want to head lower. Now, if it continues lower, and this level is around 21, continues much below here, this whole thing is shot. This makes the move off of May's low a counter trend move. So no matter how you label it at that point, you're talking that the move off of the ultimate low so far for this pullback is a counter trend move. That could only mean that the entire pullback in 2021 is not yet over. So let's zoom in and look a little bit off of the just the last couple weeks of action here. Here again is that nice five wave advance. But then you look at that breakdown. I mean, that looks pretty trendy. And then you look at this recovery off of that important support level. It's sideways. So the setup to me looks like for lower levels here. And again, if it moves much below 21, that low that was recorded a few weeks ago back in mid-July, uh, that's a problem. This whole recovery effort becomes a counter trend move. And that's going to point us back to this recovery here or this labeling here that has us in a counter trend recovery within a larger pullback uh, for Palantir. Now, if we step back here, that could all change. Let's say Palantir does find support here despite the slow start and starts turning higher and becomes strong to the upside. If it moves back towards June's high, that's going to be a bullish thing. If it moves up to 34.50, obviously pretty far away at this point, it's going to be a really bullish thing. That's going to make this entire pullback in 2021 a counter trend move. That starts opening the door to a bigger, better things. As is, all we're trying to do is trade in the direction of trendy price movement. And, um, you know, I mean, it's fairly hard to do that when you have these big down legs that are happening that basically subtracted half of the value of this guy in just a few months. Uh, and then you get slower action to the upside that really hasn't proven anything as far as turning the trend back up. So if that changes, if we start seeing more directional upside movement, then it's a buy. As is, I feel like it's, it's a guess at this point, and I don't feel like it's a uh, high probability, low risk trade. So... I hope that's helpful, Trey. Again, thanks for becoming a member of Trend Lizard. I'm here to answer any questions you have. Uh, and if you are not a member of TrendLizard.com, come visit us, see this stuff, how it works in real time, and we'll show you too where the market's heading uh, as we go. So have a wonderful weekend, y'all. We'll talk to you again very soon.